Welcome back to Dad and Tobago. And do you know, every time Colleen comes out very early, it's kind of you brace for a lot of things, a lot of bad weather. But Colleen is here for a different reason this morning. Colleen, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Hema. How are you? I'm well, thank you. And I understand that we have some, I guess, exciting news, interesting news happening in South Trinidad. More well, volcanoes. What's happening? Well, more interesting than anything else because it's not really going to impact a lot of people, just the farmers in the area. So for those that just want to hear what we've discovered, six new mud volcanoes in Los Ciro, deep southern Trinidad, in an area where we haven't really seen mud volcanoes exist previously. But for those that want to hear why, it's such a trip. So let's go back to August 21st, 2018. And if that date sounds familiar to you, that's the day Trinidad and Tobago was struck by a magnitude 6.9 earthquake to magnitude 7.3, depending on which magnitude you prefer. Now this, the epicenter of this quake was located well north and west of Trinidad, but in the Los Ciro's community, something strange was afoot. Damage in this community didn't happen immediately. In fact, the earthquake occurred at 5.31 p.m., but residents only claimed the land started to change by 8 p.m. that night. But first, where are our mud volcanoes? Typically, they're scattered all across southern Trinidad, with the majority of these muddy cones favoring the southern areas of Trinidad and the southern coast of the island particularly. Now, this is due to a few thing, things, mainly the suitable sediment and tectonics are in place, but if you are trying to find Los Zero, it's because it's covered by so many different mud volcanoes, more than 10 mud volcanoes in the area. And Los Zeros essentially became ground zero for geophysical research following the quake because the entire area of mostly farm farmland was devastated with costs running into the millions. Now satellite imagery shows a, a, an area of land approximately one kilometer long and 600 meters wide slipped towards the ocean changing the shape of the coastline as seen here and where rocks up to a million years old were brought up from depths of the earth. But on land, it was a different story. Now, farmlands were devastated, and I keep using that word because if you were there, there were entire livelihoods were effectively halted overnight for an unknown period ahead for recovery. Now, as land continued to slip, access roads were also destroyed, and so were homes, retention ponds, and the land itself. And this image you're seeing here used to be all flat land prior to the quake, and this new hill here shows that where the land has sunk between 10 and 20 feet. But what caused all of this and how does it link back to our new mud volcanoes? The two competing theories are liquefaction versus faulting. Have you ever been to the beach and your feet gets buried under a lot of sand while you're standing in the water stationary and the only way to get your feet out would be to shake it enough that the sand becomes soft again? Well, that's what an earthquake does to sediment in that is water laden. Some geoscientists think that this layer of soft, water-laden soils exists under the surface of the Los Cerros farms that activated during the quake, causing this massive area of land to slide towards the ocean. However, in addition to movement, we would also expect buildings to sink, and that didn't actually happen. The other theory is that there was a steep fault that became activated due to the earthquake and water present, allowing the top layer of soil to move towards the coast. What the fault theory also supports is the flow of fluid, including water, mud, and gases along the fault, which is necessary for mud volcanoes to form, and they usually form along faulted areas. In fact, the new mud volcanoes formed along the major fault where this red flag is here of the Los Cerros landslide event. F faults act as points of weakness in the earth for water to move in the, surf in the subsurface in saturated areas and on its journey to the surface, it mixes with surrounding soil, sometimes springing up mud, oil or gas and water. And now mud volcanoes in this area aren't explosive the way we know Paparo and the Devil's Woodyard, but it still warrants some concern as there's a chance it may block this particular farm road, but there are good news because there are alternative routes for the most part and it isn't impacting the local farmers. Back to you, Hema. Okay, you know, I can't have you out this early without asking you. So I see all the interesting developments. Uh, is there a lot of, you, do you expect a lot of tourists and stuff to come? Are people kind of flooding the area trying to figure out exactly what there is? Is there a level of fear or anxiety? Well, 
To begin, the video of this uh, mud volcano was posted on social media by one of the farmers in the area last week, Monday. So a team of geoscientists associated with the Association of Petroleum Geologists and the Geological Society of Trinidad only went down on Sunday to check it out and then they publicized their results on social media yesterday. So now that it's on social media, a lot of people will probably be going down there to see what's going on, but there's a good chance that all they're gonna see is just a little bit of mud mm. because it's just mud that's popping up on the roads. The residents, on the other hand, they are accustomed to mud volcanoes in the area. Yeah. After the earthquake, a lot of mud volcanoes popped up across their farmlands and they actually have a pretty big mud volcano located not very far from where they actually are located. So they're accustomed to this. It doesn't bring any unease to them, okay. but that the fact that it may block a farm road probably is some concern for them. Now also I do have to ask, you know, I can't have you out on the morning without asking you uh, what can we expect in the weather? Do I need an extra bottle of water or is it going to be a rainy one? Neither actually. <laughs> it's going to be cool, mostly sunny and thankfully I'm not the harboring of bad news today. Well that's a good change because normally every time Colleen is out we kind of have to brace for some really inclement weather conditions. Colleen, thank you so much uh, for that update. So to all of those who are interested in this, there's some new developments in South Trinidad are some new mud volcanoes echoing giving us an idea of what is taking place we take a short break when we come back we'll have more for you stay with us this is the morning group